What do you think? Well, <laughs> the question should be, which ones don't need more yeah. professional Christian workers? I, I, yeah, I think in, in the church today, we've, we, we've come up with this concept of ministry as being full-time um, working in the church or working for some or, you know, parachurch organization. When, biblically speaking, you know, the Apostle Paul says, "Do everything as unto the Lord." For the for the for the follower of Christ, everything they do should be ministry. You know, it just means service, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, and so we should uh, we Christians should be involved. Whatever they're doing, they should be involved in in uh, the Great Commission. Uh, you know, that is not just. Uh, passing out tracks or something, but actually discipling people, uh, giving them, uh, you know, t teaching people to obey all things that Christ commands, either by example or instruction or whatever. And so whatever p profession we're in, we should be, we, we should be exuding that. We should be communicating that. Um, there's a, there's a prophetic side, I think, to, to, to ministry, uh, where we actually communicate the word of God in the language and idiom of the culture that we're in and if you get christians doing that you kind of permeate the whole society with with that and uh so um that's that's the, what i'd like to see you know i got convicted about this pastorally at one point because in zeal to uh raise up pastors within the church in zeal to call out missionaries from the church i i think i was implicitly i don't think ever explicitly but implicitly setting up this this tiered if you're really passionate about christ and the spread of the gospel then and i would never have put it that way but i think that's the way it was coming across and uh my mobilization efforts on and to yeah which is good right to train pastors and but and missionaries but uh I, I, I think what you're saying is really, really valuable for us to constantly uh, encourage our folks with, the, the people that we're shepherding, to say, your job like matters, it's glorifying to God. The only difference would be a job that's inherently sinful. So right. there's those, but apart from that, the, we want followers of Christ in every domain, and God's designed it, and he's given unique, and that's, Vocatio calling that whole picture. He's he's calling people to different parts, and every part really matters. Like if everybody was a pastor, uh, we'd have we would have, we'd have the word and perfecting, but uh, we wouldn't be able to do anything uh, else. So uh, yeah. yeah. If sure. I if I if I can go back in time, I would I, I would collect furniture that Jesus made. Hmm. Hmm. You know yeah. <laughs> that that, cause that that wasn't good furniture. <laughs> you know whatever. You know uh, yeah. because he was. But you know, in a sense, bivocational. Yeah, I mean, really, you know, he, yeah. he was he was known as the carpenter or the the, the artisan. I think that's the Greek word, which yeah. means carpenter or stonemason. But yeah. but uh, and all these guys, all all his disciples were were that. You know, they were you know, uh, so they they understood what it meant to to be uh, disciples and disciple makers in their mm -hmm. in their uh, professions. And stuff. Yeah. To your original point, I remember growing up anytime. Uh, a young man uh, showed zeal uh, for his faith. Uh, it was automatically, hey, he's gonna be a preacher. Yeah. Uh, and the reality is there was no um, framework that was set up for faithful Christian ser uh, service yeah. Yeah. in um, the secular uh, realm. It was just either you're a preacher or you're a deacon in the church or you're some type of, you hold some type of office in the church. And then if you're not doing that, well, then you're just a lay person. Um, so it, I think the point that you were originally making is very prevalent, not just uh, in the churches that I, I grew up in, in the black church tradition, but also in, even in reform circles. But mm -hmm. I think it was more explicit mm -hmm. where I came from. Mm -hmm. It's implicit uh, where I am today. Mm -hmm. um, with you being in the D.C. area, um, what about in the realm of politics? Uh, what do you feel like? Um, where, where do you feel like people are in regards to the amount of faithful Christians we have working in the political yeah. sphere? That's a great question, because it was one of the things I thought about when, I, when you first mentioned that question, because uh, politics is really challenging uh, in the sense that I want to see as, as many gospel-believing, uh, you know, God-honoring brothers and sisters in that picture as possible. At the same time, there are uh, 
huge challenges to, but I, I guess this would be true with a variety of professions, with really advancing in that profession and keeping gospel integrity. So I don't, I don't mean that to paint a broad brush too much with politicians or other, but uh, I think that, I think we would realize that there are definitely professions where uh, in order to get ahead, you've actually got to compromise on in a variety of different ways. So this isn't just politics, but, and so to realize, okay, there will be in some professions likely limitations in a sense on advancement uh, in a worldly way because of good biblical gospel convictions playing out in our, in our lives. But all that to say, when I talk with politicians in the church that I pastor, like I am constantly saying, I'm so thankful you're there and praying for integrity and humility and purity and because there's a system that's uh, set up to go against, against that at every, every turn. That's good. Dr. Ellis, let's close on this. What do you think that that looks like um, when these guys were saying, hey, you should be in the, this realm, you should be operating um, in the secular sphere. But what does that look like once they're there? What does it look like to be faithful once they're there? Well, first of all, I think uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure if I believe that there is such a thing as a secular f sphere. Everything yeah. is, 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 the, is the kingdom of God in the general sense. Mm -hmm. God runs everything. Now there are aberrations, you know, there are things that go against the kingdom. Like, for example, I couldn't be a Christian hit man. I mean, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I think if I was in politics, I mean, I, I think uh, I think the, for a Christian to be in, in politics, they have to be non-political, it seems to me. Uh, a Christian cannot afford him or herself to be defined by a, a particular political ideology because all those ideologies have some truths and some falsehoods, you know, so how can one go completely that way you know, with one of those ideologies? Uh, on the other hand, you know, at points of agreement they can do things. At points of disagreement, they don't. But I think, I think, uh, I think what it is for a Christian to be involved in this realm, um, th I think the key thing is not to let uh, non-Christians define what their options are. Mm -hmm. I think of Daniel, Daniel the prophet. I mean, you know, he was, he he rose, you know, to power without being political mm -hmm. because God put him. At places, and of course, I'm sure he got a lot of uh, uh, pushback from his fellow nobles, uh, who thought that he had sold out by being a part of the Nebuchadnezzar administration. You know, but then you see, by the time you get to chapter four, you see all all that paid off. You know, so um, so yeah, I, I think I think a Christian being involved in these realms, uh, sh th there should be a, a distinction about them that they do not are not defined by human c categories, but they're defined by the Word of God. Amen. And I think along those lines, uh, I know cl closing this, like the last thing I would add, <clears throat> that distinction in every domain, that's what we're after, right? Yeah. A salt and light Everything. in Everything. all these different domains. And the other thing I would, I would just plug in here is for the spread of the gospel around the world, I think. There are most places that have yet to be reached with the gospel. You're not going in with a missionary visa, but you can go in with medical job. You can go in with teaching, engineering. I mean, all kind. And so, the more followers of Christ in those domains are then even looking for opportunities to leverage that and work in other places for the spread of the gospel. I think that's where things what we see in the Book of Acts. I think that's where we're really going to see massive gospel advance when all people are spreading out in all these domains all around the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers. Okay.